Oh boy, this is a really big one. Hey everybody, it's me Pluto, and here I'm going to be commentating Final Tragedy Star 5, Sook Faces Haven. Sook Faces with an apostrophe S. I did not realize that when I made the thumbnail, I had to change it. <laughs> Anyways, this star is insane, and I didn't cover this stage in its full glory because I didn't want to cannibalize my own commentary for this star when I was covering Star 5. So let me go, so let's, you know, let me go talk about a little bit more about it. Uh, let's start with this intro, which I glossed over a lot in my Star 4 video. It's pretty tough, honestly. I know I kind of made it seem like it's nothing, but it takes quite a bit of consistency. Those angle wall kicks that are before these little arches here are quite tough, honestly. And it takes a lot of practice to get good at them. Now, even though I am consistent at this beginning, don't get me wrong, there are several points where for 15, 20, sometimes less, sometimes more, that amount of minutes you can just get stuck at this beginning and you just won't get any attempts past it it's very easy to just not be able to get past it at all and one of the main proponents of those problems is this section right here this chain long jump is really precise it's super difficult to actually make that thing and just getting past that beginning is definitely tough it's consistent and you do it a lot of times so you're eventually going to get good at it but it is absolutely nothing to sleep on. It's no slouch. Here we get into this jump, which I talked about being a recommended firsty. Again, you really don't want to settle on not a firsty here, because it leaves you prone to just dying to some dumb shit, which you never want to die to some dumb shit. <laughs> Trust me, I get impatient all the time, and I die to that all the time as well. So, well, I stopped being impatient more recently. I started, like, calming down, and just, or not calming down, but, you know, just being more... <laughs> yeah. Um... Here we have some QSOGs here, so I think it would be best to talk a bit about the star. I had a lot of fun with this grind. Uh, I did this like pretty much since I got the last star uploaded, which was on like June 12th. I've pretty much been putting like one to two hours almost every single day into doing the star. And I'm gonna be honest, I had a blast. Now, out of those, out of that long time, which depending on how you like do the numbers, it's 50 to 70 hours. I was not keeping track. Over half of that was spent on one jump, and. If you're familiar with the stage, you know what the jump is, but I'll definitely point it out when we get there. For now, we have this little section, which is a tricky wall kick section. Not a difficult wall kick section, but it is a tricky wall kick section. You need to do a bit of camera manipulation to be able to actually see here, and even then, you'll still have a bit of a finicky camera, which uh, makes the best solution to mash A. As long as you can mash A fast enough, you can get a wall kick, and then you just need to time them, you know. I count out one, two, one, two to get the wall kicks here, just with the, you know, every single time I hit the wall. Make sure to avoid the little hole in the wall there, because it is invisible, so you can't see the gap. But the gap is just to get the red coin. Each four of these boxes has a shell where we can come into the shell part. The shell part is, you know, based on that one shell part in uh, Bowser's Land of Fantasy, in the same way that uh, The Shining is based on a Stephen King novel. Um, <laughs> it's pretty uh, not very faithful. And even though it looks quite difficult, it's truthfully not that hard. Even though there's no shadows, which will be more of a problem later on, it's truthfully not a very difficult section at all. And it's really nothing to worry about. It, we, if you die to this, that's an exception, not a common thing, or the rule, rather. There's a bit of a cheese here, though, where instead of going on that super thin, awkward path and making like an awkward jump, I instead just build up speed here to be able to make the whole thing. Do a quick little turn, jump up here, and now we're on this section. Okay, so now we have these pentagon platforms. These pentagons are deceptively difficult. They may look like some simple jumps, but they are no simple jumps. These jumps are no slouches. You seriously need to like be in your toes here because look at that large space where you can just fall sledge grab, plus visibility very low, very awkward camera angle, very difficult, you know? That is nothing to sleep on, and you know, I'd say that it's not necessarily a difficult jump, not one of the hard jumps in the stage, uh, that is, I didn't, uh, I kind of worded that wrong, but it's definitely difficult, and, you know, don't just, like, you are going to lose attempts there, just flat out. Speaking of the jumps that make you lose attempts, amp section. This amp section is, you know, pretty fucking infamous if you know the star. It's a bunch of precision jumps with no shadow. I am playing on Glide N64, it is not a Jabo issue. Uh, Shiden, uh, the lack of shadows here is because um, the stage is just too big, which causes their, the shadows to just glitch out for some reason. I'm not sure why, it just happens on big stages like this when you're too low to the ground. Because of this, the best way to deal with it is to look at the camera oscillations, since the camera will move slightly when Mario is above ground as opposed to not on the ground. 
Geeking lower to the ground also helps with positioning a bit as it makes it easier to see. So next up we need to prepare a punch cancel long jump. But I think the video stutters a bit here, but you know, the raw footage is there if you want to like look at the audio or whatever. <laughs> um, uh, punch cancel long jump here. I actually implemented a bit of a new strategy. I pause on the frame that I punch here and that allows me to uh, pretty much set up the punch cancel long jump better. It makes it more consistent, it makes it easier, and it also makes it so that even when the amp doesn't circle around me, I can still generally uh, get the jump pretty consistently by just using a, a, like a visual cue for when to do the punch cancel long jump. It makes the jump go from like like super like rare to get past it to like this is like probably over a 50% chance to get past it and towards the end I was truly consistent there was one session where he got to that jump six times and got past it five of those times so yeah it's become very consistent that was another recommended firsty by the way there that jump is precise even with the firsty so absolutely want a firsty there this is another jump that I made a bit of a new strategy for instead of just yoloing in I do a ground pound here to neutralize my speed which makes it a bit more consistent and by a bit more, I mean I don't think I've died to this jump ever since I made the new strategy. <laughs> and that used to be like a huge problem jump, like unironically hardest jump on the stage. <laughs> I paused a bit there to... I was a bit itchy. <laughs> so we're coming up onto some jumps that are not necessarily easy, but they're easier than what we've seen before. So I want to talk a bit about the difficulty of the star. This star is very different from the things I've done before, and as such, it's a lot harder to compare them. Like, RR to C13 Reds, I said that was hard to compare, and it is in my opinion, but, you know, some people will disagree with that. I think it, however, very few people would object to the fact that it's very difficult to compare this star to, like, RR Reds. The difficulty in the star is so different. It's significantly shorter, 20 minutes compared to 45 or 50 minutes for those other two stars, but this star is just non-stop hard jumps. Like, you're seeing this, like, these jumps are not easy. Like, they're pretty tricky stuff. And it's just like, you're just getting that that, that super hard jump or super hard jump, but you don't need to be super consistent at them. Cause like each jump, you just need to do it once and then you're past it and you don't have to worry about it anymore in the attempt. So that means that while you do need to be consistent enough to get the jump in an attempt, you don't need to be consistent to do it multiple times in an attempt. And that creates a whole new environment for the difficulty here. And I would not, like, when I think about, like, what I've done, my accomplishments and stuff like that, I don't think I can put R red, C13 reds, and this into, like, a little hierarchy of achievements. I think they each represent a different thing, like, this is, like, the pure hard jumps, R reds is, like, the pure endurance, and, like, C13 reds is a mix. Combined, I'm really proud of these three accomplishments all combined more than I am proud of them individually. <laughs> but I would not rank one above the other. I think that these are all just three amazing things I've done personally. And I'm super happy with them, especially getting this one, which I just think the star is insanely uh, like difficult and cool to have. I mean, I, I fucking, I said this was blatantly impossible. <laughs> There's a blatant message of me saying that if I get that star, get that if I get the star, I will uh, 100% Nightmare Edition. I will not. Uh, but <laughs> I did say that, and maybe I'm a liar now. Here I implement a new strategy that was found by Akaro. I did not do it in Star 4 because that strategy wasn't out yet. You know, new mixtape. Um, <laughs> new mixtape of a strategy. You know. <laughs> Here I also avoid doing a skip that Rhymeu does to skip this little purple section. I just don't like it really. I prefer to just do the purple section. I think it's easier. I, or not easier, but more comfortable. I haven't really tried to skip, but his skip just kind of looks uncomfy and like stressful. And I'd, I'd rather just do something like this, which I think is, I'm already comfortable fit. I might as well do it. Especially when I'm very rarely dying to it. I feel like I die to his thing more than I die to this. That snuff it's a bit of a problem, but if you just properly bait it, you'll be fine. Here you want to uh, land on the slope as little times as possible. This is to maintain a good angle going into this section, so that way you can safely get to this platform here. I forgot to mention this in the last video, but at this point, if you remember the amp section, I pushed a red switch. The reason is because there would be a block blocking the way here if I did not do that. That is the only reason why you need to push the switch, which is why it's only necessary for stars 4, 5, uh, 120s, and reds. This is, of course, a troll star, so I will be skipping it. 
So here we have a slope section. I mentioned this a bit in the last video, but doing uh, slope jumps off slippery slopes like this is like a one to two frame window. It's very, very difficult, and um, gaining any height with these is just, wow. <laughs> it, it, it just, uh, it takes a lot of practice to get even slightly competent about this. In recent times, this jump has become much less of a problem because I've just done it so many times. But trust me, when I was learning Star 4, this shit was insane. And even then, like in the Star 5 grind, I died to this quite a few times. I definitely got past it more than I died to it though, which I'm grateful for. Okay. Here I'm gonna do some slope uh, fuckery. I'm gonna jump when I get on the slope by holding down Z. Holding down Z lets you jump instantly on a slope because slopes are weird and they have like buffer systems. If you press A within the first five frames of landing on a slope, like here, you won't your jump won't get eaten, which is what makes slippery slope jumps so hard, I should add. I, I talked about it a bit more in the Star 4 video. Uh, regardless, here, uh, wall kick section, nothing too special. You can die to this very easily if you're impatient, but it's... Uh, if, you're just, if you just play it carefully here, just checking your positioning on every single uh, wall here, it's very easy to do. I also mentioned a bit of a new setup for the section coming up on the slope here. Uh, in my Star 4 video, I do two kicks to position myself. Here I only do one kick, which positions you a lot better. It allows you to have better angles, which lets you save yourself more. It's overall just makes the jump more consistent ever since I switched. This was another jump that went from like, I die to this occasionally, to enough, like quite a bit honestly, to I never die to this, which is a big, big improvement. Small little section here. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the interesting stuff, aka the section where Star 5 becomes Star 5 and Star 4 becomes Star 4. In Star 4, we went to the right here, Mario's right that is, well, I guess it sometimes is left. Um, uh, instead, we're gonna be going to the left. <laughs> I don't know why I said Mario's right, <laughs> as if that's not something that's constantly changing. We're going down this path, okay? <laughs> A bit of a QSLG section, nothing really too notable here. So, new methods for QSLGs. If you remember when I was doing uh, invisible wall kicks and Tdon, I made a new strategy for getting frame perfect QSLGs. Uh, here I'm doing a bit of a remix of that strategy. I'm pressing A and pause at the same time while doing a neutral QSLG, and this lets me do a one frame suboptimal QSLG, which is good enough for this section and is a lot safer than the frame perfect method so i opt for that instead of the frame perfect method also invisible thins trust me it's not as hard as it looks <laughs> like uh, that jump does not kill as many runs as you would think it is it's really just a combination of muscle memory for when to hit the wall kicks and then just don't and then just using that certain camera there so you can get a general idea of where to where to aim it's really not as bad as it looks on the other hand, we have this jump. This is named Triple Invis. So let me explain this jump for you. There is a precise wall kick section here. It's nothing too special though. It's just a normal precise wall kick section. The problem is that there's this wall kick section will be copied on top of itself two more times, making three layers. However, the top two layers will be completely invisible. So, instead of being able to just use your eyes to know where to wall kick, you instead need to make an elaborate setup using a lot of visual cues, a lot of muscle memory, and most importantly, a lot of just fucking trial and error and sheer practice. There is... I could talk about this jump for probably like an hour or something. There's so many little intricacies, so many little things that just it's fucking just... This jump took so much time to get even a little competent at. It's so difficult. There are times when you just won't be able to get this jump. There are times when you'll be getting it th like three times in a row. It is really finicky and because it's invisible, it's extremely hard to know what you're doing wrong. Which means that when you make a mistake, there's so little feedback that sometimes you'll, your mistakes will breed more mistakes because you'll think that the mistake you were making wasn't <laughs> actually what was going on and you'll have introduced a whole new mistake because you're trying to correct something that wasn't wrong in the first place. Which require, which eventually you get to a point where you just say fuck it 
and you just start from the beginning, you start from scratch, you go back to the basics, and you just like redo your strategy in its most primitive form. Because I did write down a strategy for this, and you know, I it, it wasn't perfect, I had to change it. <laughs> Speaking of things that aren't perfect, oops, <laughs> yeah I fell down there, but thankfully I saved it. <laughs> um, Regardless, um, I had to like change my strategy over and over again to be more consistent. And because of that, the written strategy I have down is not 100% accurate to my strats now. I have better strategies that I developed in my mind, but I didn't write them down. So in the comment section of this video, I will link a paste bin where you can find my written strategy for triple invis. But if, if you want to try it yourself or something, just know that it is not... <laughs> It is not like, don't think of it as your cheat sheet to get the jump for free. It is a, like, it is a, it is a, it is a, um, <laughs> it is a foundation to build your own strats upon. This jump, some people will look at this jump and go, it's just memorization. Memorize the visual cues and you're fine. It is so much more than that. It is so much more complex. It is so much more inconsistent than that. It is just so much more than just a little bit of memorization. You need to practice this jump so much, and this is the jump that took over half of my practice. And despite that, I'm still fucking it up in the attempt. And fucking, ugh. don't worry, that's the last time I fall. <laughs> Jeez, it was kind of unfortunate I fell so many times, but it goes to show how much I practice that I managed to get consistent enough that I can fall two times and still get the jump. Maybe it shows how inconsistent I am. <laughs> Regardless, this is just an absurd jump. I... It's truly a visual spectacle, and looking at it now, it's like, wow, this is, like, incredible that this is even possible. It is, without a doubt, the hardest jump in Dream Edition, at least in my opinion. It is just so impossibly hard. It takes so much effort to get even once, and then to be able to get it every single... Like, there was a point when I was counting every single trip on biz I had gotten because it was each one was significant progress. Each time I got the jump was like huge. And sometimes like getting it once would take like an hour, multiple hours even. But as you practice it more, you get to that point where it becomes consistent. You get to that point where it's a couple minutes, not hours. You get to the point where you can do it three times in a row like I have multiple times. And once you get to that point, you can finally overcome it and eventually get past it. Also, one more detail. You might notice that sometimes I pause and jump. That's because my thumb is slipping off the analog stick and I want to readjust. With that being said, now let's get into the next jump because once you get past Triple Invis, there is no break. Nothing. You need to go immediately into the next jump. So right at the bat, we have a bit of a snuff it problem here. Not too bad to kill. Of course, we have everyone's favorite, Thin Wall Kicks, except we don't have just Thin Wall Kicks, we have Thin Arch Tower. At least what I call the Thin Arch Tower, because it's a tower of Thin Arches. If you're thinking, hey, it's just the ending of TD Thins, but three times in a row, honestly, you'd be mistaken, it's harder than that. Uh, you, you, you'd know if you, like, play the section, but it's significantly harder than just doing three Thin Arches, like, doing the ending of TD Thins three times in a row. It's a lot more precise than that. It's a lot more finicky than that. The ice, the arches are super precise, like that one, which is just like such a massive jump there. It's very difficult and probably the second hardest jump in the stage, if I'm being honest. Which is unfortunate because it's after Triple Invis, and I should mention that I did die to that jump in an attempt. Thankfully, th this was my second attempt as Triple Invis, and I got the star. Kill, kill the snuff it there, and now we have another walk section. This one is a. Uh, not too bad, honestly. <laughs> at first it seems pretty tough because the arches here are kind of difficult to do, but if you come at it with an angle you can get pretty good at it. Here I do a bit of an interesting strategy. Instead of going to the edge there like I think Rambi intended, I instead come out this side here. This allows me to just make the arch a bit more forgiving since I don't have to be as precise since I get another wall kick. It also speeds up the QSOGs on top. The downside though is that because I come at this with an angle, getting the actual arch here is a bit tricky, but as long as you play it safe, you'll never die. Unlike Star 4 where the ending was extremely difficult, the ending to the star is extremely consistent. However, you have that pressure of doing triple invis which makes it very tense. <laughs> so 
So we're coming up on the curiosities here, and um, yeah, I to say I'm proud of the star is an understatement. I love this star. It's badly designed, but I fucking loved every second of the practice and the attempts. Well, not every second, I did get annoyed occasionally, but I, I really enjoyed it. It was so much fun, you know? I've just been having fun. Like, this game is fun. Like, I, I play this game because it's fun, you know? I fucking love this game. <laughs> And I fucking love other games, man. I've, I mean, I've, you know, I've talked about Toho. I actually got a, my first Lunatic 1cc in a Toho game. I uh, Lunatic 1cc Toho 18. That was awesome. Uh, you know, I'm playing a lot of A Link to the Past randomizers with a friend. You know, I've just been like, you know, doing stuff, and you know, I've been, you know, this game is part of that. It's just fun. I've just been having a lot of fun lately. I've been, I've been very happy. And having the start done is just a nice. It's, it's a. Uh, it's not a burden off my shoulders, but it's just something to be proud of. It's something to be happy with, and there's a bit of a sense of relief of getting something this hard done. And of course, you know, I'm going to move on to the next difficult Dream Edition star. It'll be a very long time before that star because it's C14 Reds, and I'm not going to get that before summer, and school's going to start. I'm going to have less time. But <laughs> that's not what matters. What matters is that I'm enjoying the game. If someone beats my Dream Edition star count, fucking congratulations. You fucking did an amazing thing. Whether or not that happens, no one really knows, obviously, but <laughs> if it happens, like, I don't care, because I'm not playing Dream Edition because I want to be the first to beat it. I'm playing Dream Edition because I have real passion for this game, and I love it. You know, I wouldn't be grinding Final Tragedy Star 5 if I didn't have a real passion for this game. <laughs> With all that being said, this is the ending of Final Tragedy Star 5. I really hope you enjoyed this just this amazing <laughs> fucking star. Uh, I, I, I'm just so proud of this, and I, I really hope that everyone who watched this video enjoyed it. With that being said, I'll switch back to the raw audio. I hope you all enjoyed. See you guys next time. Bye. Yes! Yes, yes, yes. My parents are in the other room. I don't want to yell, but yes. 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 Oh my god, I can't wait for Maria to get back from fucking Legacy. I, I really want to surprise her with this. Yes! Yes, man. Yes. Yes. Fucking yes, man. Look at that. God damn, dude. <laughs> yes! I knew I could do it, man. I fucking knew I could do it. I can't believe what happened on this fucking jump, man. That was so ridiculous. I fucked it up so many goddamn times. And I still fucking got it. What the fuck was that, man? Oh my goodness. Okay, when Maria gets back from Legacy, I'm definitely gonna surprise her with that one. Holy shit. Oh my goodness. Jesus Christ, man. What the fuck was that?